Hi everyone, welcome to my 22 week pregnancy vlog. Um, I, oof, that's bright. There we go. My eyes have adjusted. Um, how are you going? I am doing well. I'll start off with showing you my belly because sometimes I forget. Um, I'm wearing pajama pants, yeah, just FYI, because it's one of those days. There's a little, not little, but there's a 22 week belly for you. Fourth baby. Nice little chunk of sideburn, uh, sideburns. What's that called? Uh, love handles, that's it. Uh, again, look, no line. No line. I wonder if this arm is not going to have a line, this, this um, pregnancy. I don't know. Um, hi, everyone. I have been doing some major packing today because we are leaving Estonia in a week, a week from today. So uh, I have three more days left of filming Monday night, all through the night I shoot. And then I have, um, which is the day this gets posted. And then I have two more days and done, which is wild. Um, I'm really excited to be done with work, uh, especially full-time work where I'm playing the lead, lead, lead of something. I've just done six months of playing the lead on A Discovery of Witches and then this little six week stint where I'm the lead, which basically means you're in every day, you're the first one in, you're the last one to leave. You know, it's definitely a slog, but it's certainly worth it. And this has been one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life creatively. Um, I just love, I just feel like I'm working with visionaries and I'm working with real artists who understand what good filmmaking is. Um, and I just feel really reinvigorated in the process. The character's completely amazing and flawed and tough. It's emotionally taxing for sure. I play a woman who um, has lost her child and uh, she, has, she has to deal with a lot of psychological issues. And anyway, it's the story is sort of right up my alley in terms of what I seek out as a performer. So it's been just completely liberating and, and so satisfying. Um, but having said that, it takes a lot out of you, uh, emotionally and it's, it's just quite draining and on top of it, I'm pregnant. So three days makes me feel happy. I, it's also bittersweet because I have had Susie, one of my besties who I talk about all the time. She was the first person to find out that I was pregnant with this little baby because I was with her in Tesco when I took the test and was like, Oh my God. Um, she, our journey is coming to an end. So she's been with me since August the 10th when um, we first flew out to do a Discovery of Witches um, together. Just as I, we've been friends since where we were 15 and just always have such a good laugh together. And she was working in retail in Adelaide and I was like, sure, I'll come on this adventure and hang out with the kids. And, um, and we've just had so many fun days we do our little exercising together although we haven't been doing much since I got pregnant um but listening to true crime podcast she comes to set she brings the kids we have you know or had wine nights together we can't really do that anymore but we stay up and watch shows and docos and it, it's just amazing I feel like I have a roomie again and I'm 35 um and so that's coming to an end, which is really, um, oh, it's just bittersweet. Although she's adamant that the next couple of movies that I do, she's like, I'm still coming with you. But of course, you know, she's got a long-term boyfriend and um, they want to have a baby soon as well. So um, that will be the next stage in her life, which will be so exciting to see another friend of mine go through what I've been going through over the last seven years. Anyway, so bittersweet feelings about things wrapping up and coming to an end, but could not be more excited to spend time in LA, all be back together there. Um, so many friends of mine are vaccinated now, uh, and it just means that I think the world's starting to open up a little bit more, um, although there are still so many countries dealing with it, like India, for example. So we're not there yet. The world is still suffering. However, Every day we're taking a step in the right direction, it feels. 
and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and that is giving me hope. Um, we talk about hope a lot this month um, on your Zen Mama. And so, yeah, there's like a sense of people are cautiously optimistic, um, which has been really uh, lifting me up whenever I'm having moments of just wanting things to feel normal again. Um, you know, we still have to jump through a lot of loopholes to try and get our family back into Australia because not all of us are Australian. Um, obviously, like me and the kids are, but my husband isn't and then my stepson is not Australian. So who are we going to get? We're going to apply for exemptions and we got to, um, you know, it's not smooth sailing. And I know Mark has been incredibly stressed about that the last couple of weeks just like making sure we have all the right documents in place and you know me I'm applying for a green card but then also trying to get an O1 visa in the in the interim and then Mark's trying for his Australian citizenship and there's just for him there's a lot of stressy stuff going on so he's had a really hard kind of 48 hours um but yeah, like so far this this week, it's been great. Um, I'm usually the very calm one of the two of us. Uh, however, I told you about the scan that I went and got last week. Uh, it's my anatomy scan. It's the big scan that we all get when we're 20 weeks pregnant. And it was it, in and of itself, it was it was pretty stressful because we don't speak Estonian and um, the the doctor or the sonographer, I'm not actually sure if she's a doctor, but or the nurse, um, could only speak certain words. And, you know, we were really, we were reassured because she kept saying normal, normal, everything looks normal. Um, but then when I sent it to my midwife in Australia, um, she sent it on to my backup doctor there. So just so you are clear, I have sort of quite a significant team of caregivers this pregnancy, um, as I did last pregnancy. And that's simply because I live in two different countries. So I'm spending a lot of my pregnancy in America or maybe the majority of my pregnancy um, in America and overseas. So I have my primary caretaker there, Dr. Jay Goldberg, who's amazing, who um, has delivered Sarah's babies, last two babies. Uh, but then I have a specialist, Dr. Silverman, who is just this amazing, world-renowned specialist in Los Angeles. He um, deals with a lot of neonatal issues, and he's um, I hear that he's one of the people to invent the um, in utero blood transfusions for babies who are affected by IC immunization disorders. So I'm in the hands of literally the best doctors in the world. Um, so the ISO immunization side of my pregnancy, it's not flaring up, which is wonderful. So my numbers are very, very, very low, almost so low that they're um, unable to be read, which is a positive. But then, of course, like the thing I found out from my backup doctor in Adelaide, who's also a Dr. J, um, she just said, look, I've noticed that your, um, obviously my placenta is quite low lying. That's quite typical for me. It's where your placenta sits quite close to your cervix. Now, if your placenta is over your cervix, um, I believe it's called placenta previa. Yeah. Um, you can't birth vaginally. Uh, so that's an issue for me because of how I love to birth. I love to birth at the birth center and, you know, instantaneously I will be upgraded to having a high risk pregnancy. If that is the case, this is very typical for me. I feel like every one of my pregnancies I hear, Oh, the placenta is low lying. It's close to the cervix. Um, I usually have a routine ultrasound around 32 weeks, which typically shows that the, uh, placenta has been pulled up away from the cervix. So I'm just hoping, I think this is the closest my placenta has ever been to the cervix, but I'm hoping that that will be the case. So for me, that is a bit of a non-issue um, that it got picked up in the scan. And I was like, all right, par for the course. That's just what happens to me when I'm pregnant with my placenta. Uh, the thing that I have not experienced before is this thing I had to Google, I didn't know about it, um, called arterial uterine Doppler, I think it's called. Um, and it's basically, it's like the fancy terminology for um, a, uh, looking at the blood flow in the umbilical cord to the placenta and making sure that your um, the umbilical cord has the proper blood flow 
So it appears that mine are working overtime, working a bit harder, and I had elevated levels of the blood, um, which can sometimes indicate that there's uh, a placental insufficiency. Um, it can point to preeclampsia, early signs of preeclampsia. It can point to, um, you know, babies being on the smaller side, earlier delivery, um, uh, and even like as bad as uh, fetal death. So, of course, when I read that, she was like, it's okay. Like, I just want to do, let's just do some um, scans at like 24 weeks, 28 weeks, 32 weeks, just to see how baby's measuring it and the size of, of bubs. And of course, she was so calm in her email. But then I did the thing that you go and do because that's just what we do as human beings, where you just start Googling everything. And um, it was like all the worst stuff. I was reading studies on it. I was like, oh, my God, what? I'm going to have to monitor her constantly. Like, oh, I may end up having a premature baby. So then I'm looking up, you know, um, survival rates at like each week and have just been really over the top thinking about how much she's moving and like really focusing on her patterns of movement and knowing, oh, I just got to get to 24 weeks. I just got to get to 24 weeks. And this is all, I'm just doing myself a disservice because I'm being a crazy person. And Mark pointed out, he's like, I'm the one that does that. I'm the one that usually does that. And he's like, it makes me worried when you're the one that starts tripping out. And I was like, please give me this. Please let me get worried. Please let me have these moments and like, don't take that away from me. And then like run with the, oh my God, my baby's going to die anxiety, which is what Mark can just go to like, he can get very fatalistic. I was like, just, just let me be the one to worry. Like, please don't take that on. Can you continue to be the strong person? Um, and I sent it to my, um, my US doctor, Dr. Jay Goldberg. And he was like, I think it's okay. Like, it's fine. And I have an appointment with a specialist anyway for the ISO immunization pregnancy. Um, Dr. Silverman, I have a, an appointment with him <coughs> like around May 14th. Uh, so he's going to redo the scan anyway, just to check on her. And I'll bring it up with him and I'll see what he thinks. But ultimately, I think I've blown up into a much bigger deal than it is. And so many of the studies show that like in the study focus group of like 140 women, only like 10% of these had any issues. Um, and they presented with similar results, having this sort of increased number. Um, but anyway, so that's been the source of my anxiety this week. It comes in ebbs and flows. Sometimes I oscillate between, oh my God, it's fine. Everything's fine. And then like, oh my gosh, is this too good to be true? Like this baby is our, just our dream, our made manifest baby. We called her in. We, we've been talking to her. I've been talking to her for years. Um, been talking to her using her name that we picked out years ago. I just, I just knew I was having a little girl and I was so desperate to have this, this age gap. And then, um, you know, Mark and I always look at each other and I'm like, this is a dream. She's our, she's our dream. Like we've, we've created this. We, we called this in. This was meant to be. And then there's like a little, little part of my brain that's like, well, it's, it's not going to be smooth sailing for this baby and for you. Um, however, I'm, I'm going to continue to ignore the little committee in my mind that drags me down when I start feeling really excited. Um, and I'm sure everything's going to be fine, but I thought I'd share that with you in the spirit of being transparent and having a vlog and saying, hey, you know what? Like sometimes things come up in pregnancy that throw us for a loop and we just got to roll with the punches. And it's, again, just highlights what a miraculous thing pregnancy is and bringing a baby into the world and carrying them full term and having no issues. That is a miracle. So um, anyway, all is fine. And, um, and that's my update for this week. Next week, I'll be updating you from USA. Um, actually, no. Yeah, it, it might just be as I've landed, I'll be... Um, 23 weeks so i'll wait till i've landed in la and then do another one 
All right, guys, so much love. Have a wonderful week. I hope you're doing well and uh, thinking of you all. Bye-bye.